So, I'm Jim and this is my beast and several people have asked me for details as to how I've set it up. So I thought I would do this quick video on the last day of a 10,000 mile journey from Maryland up the Alaska Highway and back. So yeah, I've done quite a few mods. Uh, it's a R1200 GS Adventure liquid cool 2014. And so yes, it's been almost flawless. I do have a power leak somewhere. Uh, I'll find it when I get back. <clears throat> so let's take this from the front maybe. I've got GoPro mountings everywhere um, or in several places. The one in the front that you see there on the right is my time-lapse GoPro. It's been set to take a shot every two seconds. I'm currently doing a film called From Whitehorse to Washington where I've filmed every, I've shot every two seconds from Whitehorse and the Yukon all the way to Washington DC where I will be tonight. I've got a uh, headlamp cover, an indispensable item. This one's full of bugs as you can see and if you look inside you'll see that the inside is clear. It's the removable one and it's great. I'm going to skip over all the brands for now. Uh, you'll be able to spot them and if you want you can ask me and I'll let you know. A couple of stickers, nice American Eagle, nice Royal Canadian Air Force one because I was a member of the Royal Canadian Air Force. I've changed the uh, flashers. I've put uh, LEDs inside. Uh, I will mention this one because I remember it. It's from Dynamic Motorrad. The guy was fabulous. There was a defective one and he immediately replaced it. That little gizmo that you see there, the plastic gizmo, I, I guess I'll point at a few things every once in a while. That plastic gizmo is where I put my headlamp, uh, my uh, flashlight. Uh, if ever my headlamp gives out or if I needed to light something in you know, on a campsite and I put an LED um, flashlight there. Note the wiring on the GoPro. Uh, what I've done is that I've wired the GoPro directly here. I've just bunched up the wire and I've wired it directly to a cigarette lighter. Um, <clears throat> Nothing on the front wheels other than a couple of stickers. Moving back, uh, these are my pride and joy. So I've got some Bosch um, horns. I've got two of them, one on either side, identical. I don't know how loud they are in DB. They're loud. Uh, trucks move over. Right above it, you've got some, uh, I think they're the Erica's from Clearwater. Uh, I believe is the name of the company. I had to jimmy rig some some lens covers on them. They now make these, but I made mine before they made theirs. And I'm uh, incredibly happy with them. They're connected to the CAN bus directly. And what's great is that when uh, the uh, I, I flash my high beams, uh, of course, they come on full power and they're adjustable for low beam and you can shut them off. And I've got something rigged with the horn as well, which is great. When I sound my horn, the high beams come on automatically. So trucks do move over. Inside, I've protected the radiators, of course. So I've put grills. I hope you can see those. <clears throat> I've put grills on both sides. Uh, there is a mother of all bugs which is right there and I decided I would I apologize to anybody who's squeamish but I thought I would bring it all the way back to Washington I've got a black dog uh, plate underneath uh, really happy with it it's uh, solid um, I think it feels solid I haven't hit anything yet but it, it it's definitely solid and I'm happy Okay, water bottles. Decided to mount a couple of water bottles on either side up front. Um, these are my highway pegs. Obviously, as you can see, I can't use this one because I sometimes carry spare tires and this is a spare tire. And the reason I carry a spare tire is that when you're crossing the country and you need to change it out, 
um, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to find uh, in stock so I don't want to waste time I carry them I also sometimes carry my off-road tires there and ride on my on-road tires and therefore when I get to destination I just switch them out you'll notice that I lock them I've got these two little red padlocks that I tie to the crash bars I also use some 24 inch zip ties and uh, yes I also wrap them because you don't want to have gunk inside the tire when you're putting it on. I've put the upper crash bars from Touratech. Uh, I'm very happy with them. Uh, again, haven't dumped it, but I'm, I'm happy for two reasons. One is the, the probable protection. Two, I get to attach my tires. Actually, a third reason also is the foot pegs uh, that I get to attach to the upper, the highway foot pegs that I get to attach to the upper. Um, I did put the safety cover for the oil. What else? I changed out the foot pegs. Uh, I didn't like the BMW foot pegs, and so I changed out these. These are the ones that spin. Well, not spin, but they tilt, and they also tilt up. And you can put the plastic cover on them when you're on road. When you're off road, you remove them. I think they're called the pivot pegs. Um, I'm just realizing now that my brake is a little too low. Uh, I'm going to raise that brake when I get back home. Uh, you'll notice this plug here. This plug leads under the seat and to the other side, and it's for my heated vest, and I just plug it into the battery. I don't think that's the source of my power leak because it's been off for a couple of days and I'm still getting my power leak, but I have a power leak. Uh, this cable that you see here, this master lock, uh, is wrapped around the bike and when I need it, I take it off and I tie the bike to whatever I need to tie it to. Uh, it doesn't happen every day, but happens often enough. Uh, I put a tank guard. I like the American flag there and I put it there just to make sure that I could uh, not worry about scratching the front part of the tank. Coming back up here, I put the storm guards from um, Bark Busters. I'm pretty happy with them. I will admit the metal I'm happy with. I'm not convinced that they give me better wind protection than the stock BMW ones. I'm told they do. I'm not sure. Uh, perhaps uh, time will tell. Uh, no, time won't tell. But I'm 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 not convinced. I changed the mirrors out. I put them with the uh, ram mount. Uh, I put these round mirrors. Very happy with them. Uh, get to adjust them any which way. And I'm assuming that if I do take a dump someday, they will probably survive better than the stock ones. I've put a little Kestrel weather station. Let me zoom in there. Uh, you see that little blue thing there? That's from Kestrel. That's the backside that you're looking at. And it's a little weather station. And so when I get up in the morning and I'm in my tent and I want to know what the temperature is, I want to know if the barometer has been going up or down, I want to know what the humidity is, uh, I use it. Fabulous. Really happy with it. I put this little ram mount box that I have wired through the back into the bike and so I can charge things. I usually carry, well I, not usually, I do carry, but they're on the side right now, you, you don't see them uh, because I just got out of my tent. Uh, I carry a uh, 20,000 milliamp um, battery, external battery, and I put my iPhone there. And so I keep, and, and so I keep the, the battery charged, the external battery, and then use it to charge my iPhone, charge my helmet, etc. Right now it's got my slow-mo GoPro in there, which I'm about to pull out and put onto this RAM mount and onto what you see up here, because I'm about to drive through New York City and do a slow-mo. And so I just want to have it handy. So I don't leave it out while I'm riding it at normal speed. But as soon as I get into the city, I'll pull it out and put it on top there. I've got an in-reach for my wife to be able to track me. That's the deal. I'm not allowed to go out and play without it. And I've got an Accurite lightning alert, which I'm not happy with. Uh, I, I will say this, it gives a lot of false positives. I, I don't like lightning. I don't do lightning. I don't do tornadoes. Um, pretty much do anything else, but I don't do those two. 
and unfortunately this one is always going off no matter where I've put it on the bike it goes off uh, so it, it doesn't go off when you're riding on a beautiful clear day but as soon as there are clouds uh, even if there is no lightning in sight uh, it, it goes off my guess is that it's also registering cloud to cloud lightning that's not very useful um, <clears throat> uh, I don't think it is anyway so I am thinking about either upgrading or just not riding when I think there's lightning. Uh, the problem with lightning is that you can find it on most of the iPhone or uh, Android radar apps, uh, except when you're traveling up in the middle of nowhere, which is when you need it most. Uh, stock GPS, the Navigator 5, but I have mounted extra maps. I, I've installed extra maps. I installed the uh, Yukon, well, the Northwest Canada, and the Alaska Topo maps from, uh, from Garmin. Uh, hanging off the side there before I forget it is a little LED flashlight which I use when I park in when I do wild camping uh, wilderness camping and that I need to see where I'm putting my side stand down I realized that I could never see where I was putting my side stand down in the middle of the night when there was no uh, when there was no uh, full moon so I've I've installed it and I'm pretty happy with it uh, moving backwards cases uh, the usual uh, reflectors, a little sticker of Sicily because my wife is Sicilian and if I don't put it I'd be in trouble. I've mounted a Pelican case on top which is where I put my camera gear and you'll notice that I've also installed a um, solar panel which I use to charge an additional battery inside. I've got two master locks that I run through uh, two holes, two extra holes that I made and then I attach it here to the uh, top of the top case <clears throat> uh, gives additional security so that they can't open it and they can't walk away with it. Uh, the original Pelican holes were here but I found that with this master lock and I couldn't find these kinds of locks to the exact size so uh, what I did is I just drilled two more holes here and that's great, it works. Inside uh, my my photo case, which I've Jimmy rigged, that's the battery I was telling you about that I charged with a solar panel. Uh, that one there is a, I put a little sticker, is a 20K also, 20,000. Uh, I've got my GoPros here, an external microphone if I have to do an interview. Uh, that's the charger for my Nightcore batteries. The Nightcore is the uh, LED flashlight that I, um, that I use. So let's close this out. Why is it closing? Oh, because I've got these locks that are acting as, sorry if the camera is moving around. Okay, um, on the back of the top case, you'll notice I've, I went to the container store and I bought these metal racks and I, um, I cut them, I pierced holes and they're brilliant. I'm so happy. This is probably one of the best things I've done. I've got, I, I, I jam it full of, so I've got my anti-fog, I've got a cloth, I've got my little uh, trowel, I've got extra water here, I've got my reflective vest if I ever need it, and I have an extra solar uh, Waka Waka flashlight in the back, which I use in an emergency. It's always charged, it's great, it's good for SOSs, etc. Um, I've got uh, this rigged up with flags. Uh, usually what I do is, so the Canadian flag, because I was born in Canada, uh, and I was going to Canada on this trip. I had the Yukon and the Northwest Territories because that was my final destination. I have my POW MIA flag on this side, proud to wear it, and the US flag. And of course, being a Maryland resident, I've got my Maryland flag. As you can tell, they're tired, they're worn out. I'm going to have to replace them when I get back. Brilliant little thermos from um, Thermos. Uh, keeps things warm for 18 hours. They say hot. I'll say warm for 18, but hot for about 8 to 10. And that's fabulous for my coffee. Um, I'm really happy to have it. I installed this little bar, which comes from a kitchen cabinet. It's stainless steel. It won't go anywhere. And I use it to dry my clothes and to hang things that I need to hang, carabiners, etc. This little orange pole that you see here, 
is no, it's not metal. I'm not attracting lightning. It's a plastic rod uh, that you get for $2.50 at Home Depot. I just added a little bit of reflective tape. It adds a little bit of visibility, but what I really use it for is when I'm camping in the wild and I hide my food, my bear food, uh, in my bear sack, I want to remember where I put it. So even if I hang it in the tree, sometimes I can't find it. So I figured out that I would put the pole near the food and it just reminds me where I've put the food and I'm really happy with it. Uh, on the back, I uh, also installed the uh, LED bulbs that I installed in the front here from Dynamic Motorrad, installed them there. Uh, put a US license plate. Also put two uh, additional flashers uh, sorry, senior moment, can't remember the name again of the uh, manufacturer. Very happy with them. They're LEDs, they're connected to the CAN bus, they work with the hazards, they work with the turn signals. Really, really happy. I installed the, the little box in the back. Um, again, this one, I don't remember who it's from. I am, put my valuables in there, pretty happy with it. It's a little bit of a pain to open and close, but you don't open and close it all the time. On the back of my left case, I installed two water bottle holders. In one, I put a fire extinguisher. In the other, I put my backup bear spray. I have another bear spray that I carry on me when I'm traveling. On this side, I've just mounted here because I'm traveling. I've got my tent, I've got my hammock. Uh, the blue bag you see there is a waterproof bag that has the bear sack in it. And the bear sack is really what matters. But the reason I put the blue water bag on top is because little critters can get into the bear bag and because they have sharper claws and also the bear bag was not waterproof so by putting it in the waterproof sack i'm all set i've got my sleeping bag i've got my bike cover on top which is put into a little compression bag because i cover my bike at night and i've got my air mattress there here i've just got my tripod, uh, my photo tripod, which is in a bag as well. It's leaning on the foot peg, on the passenger foot peg, and I've just tied it with a couple of tie wraps. Underneath all of this stuff is another Black Dog product. It's their uh, pillion seat. So when I, uh, you have to bolt it, so it's a bit of a pain, but I, I think they're right. It's better and stronger than if you put it into the plastic opening for the lock mechanism. So I'm happy with that. I did not change out my seat. I could have, might, should, mm, not sure. I'm pretty happy with it. I've just done just close to 10,000 miles now in, in three weeks. And uh, that's not, I can't say I'm suffering. The first couple of days were a little sore but then I'm, I'm fine now. So I'm, I, I'm not thinking seriously about changing out the seat. Uh, that little red thing you see there is what I had mentioned before. It is the uh, other side, the other end of my uh, heated vest uh, rig. So I just plug my heated vest in there. I actually only had to use it twice on this trip and neither one of them were in the north. Uh, one was in Wisconsin and one was in Manitoba. Um, so uh, yeah indeed when I was going heading north I went through Wisconsin and got hit with a snowstorm and uh, 28, 29 degree temperatures and of course that called for the heated vest. Uh, I have a, uh, I have a uh, disc lock and I was getting fed up with finding a place to put it. And so I got this little soap, I think it's a soap dish container from the container store, which is to put the soap uh, with little suction cups. And all I've done is I tie wrapped it, but I also uh, jimmy rigged this little brace here because it was opening up because of the weight. Uh, because as you can see, it's actually open, uh, where is it, um, there it's open in the back so I had to, to jimmy rig it. I put the I put a, a side stand pad I guess we'll call that um, standard pretty happy with it there are others I'm not sure which one is the best one or not uh, right what you see there is my little holster to carry my knife um, I have two knives when I travel into the woods I've got my 40 year old buck knife and I've got a uh, standard, um, which I'm actually going to put in so you'll see it. I've got a, a standard uh, 
knife that I put in. I just put it here. I don't leave it in there when I'm in the city, but I put it in when I'm uh, on the highway or when I'm in the woods. I just have it there. It's legal in all states, to the best of my knowledge, so we're good to go. Have I forgotten anything? Probably have. Yeah, a couple of things inside. Uh, oh, if you're wondering what that white roll is, it's an old man roll. It's my back roll. It's my chiropractor roll. So when my back gets sore, which it has been on this trip because I have a problem with two of my vertebra, yeah, I pull it out and look like an idiot and uh, put it down on the asphalt and roll around. And what's underneath that is a stool, which I use just to sit down and chill. Uh, I often like to stop uh, by the side of the road, just chill, or at the campsite, and you can't find a log all the time. And today I'm in an actual campsite, uh, a place called Fort Getty in Rhode Island. But in most cases, I, I tend to like to camp in the wilderness. And so I just like having that little stool. It's not heavy. Shoot me if you're not happy that I have it. Um, inside, I've got uh, these, I apologize, I don't like dissing people, but saddlemen. Uh, bags uh, that are there. Let me step back. Um, they're kind of useless. First of all, they come with Velcro. The Velcro doesn't hold. Uh, I ended up having to put rivets. And then uh, to put stuff in, I, I've used it here to put my first aid and trauma stuff. I've also got some, some gloves, as you can see here, latex gloves. Um, it's just a pain to take things in and out. Like if you'll notice, the two lower pockets, sorry, let me remove this strap the two lower pockets uh, open to the side. So to get something in there, you, you can't, you've got to stuff it. So whoever designed it didn't realize that there was a lid with an edge. So on this side, if I, if I look down here, I mean, you can't get stuff out. So anyway, not great. I've, I've got them, I make use of them. Uh, that's that. I also bought these bags. I forget her name. It's from a company with a with a woman's name. They're, they're okay. I would I have preferred to stick to the BMW ones. Maybe they're more rigid. But then again, these maybe being more flexible, I get to stuff things in. Like here on this trip, I took my computer, my laptop, so I, I stuffed it in there, and I do stuff a couple of hard disks and an additional first aid kit. Yeah, call me over cautious, but I. I also like to help people, and on this trip, I had the uh, the privilege of, of helping somebody who was uh, who was injured. So I was pretty happy to have uh, all my gear. I think that's it. Let me close the lid and back up and give you a a last tour um, of the bike. I'm happy. Uh, I've been on BMW uh, adventure or enduro bikes since the R80 GS. This is clearly the best I've had. Um, I've had almost every one throughout the series, and I, I'm, I'm proud to call this one the Beast, although a friend of mine just gave it another name for you Trekkies out there. It's the Borg, so that this is my Borg. I hope I'll see you all on, on the road, rubber side down. In my case, not shiny side up, more like uh, complex side up. Don't be fooled by, by the mass there, it's not that heavy. Uh, I like to say, uh, this is one of my questions, but I like to say that I, I don't carry more than a passenger uh, in terms of weight. So for off-road it's a little tricky, but uh, oh, one last thing, speaking of off-road, is you'll notice I've put in the back, these are not good ones, I'm not happy with them, but I've put road tires, full road. I am now going to adopt the following policy with my tires. I am using from now on a Tourance Next 9010 front because it really holds out. The one I've got in the front now, okay, let me show it to you. The one I have in the front now already has 10,000 miles on it. And it's, I'm not gonna say it's as good as new, but it's, it's fabulous. And on the back, I'm going to now try, I put a cheap Bridgestone that I had no choice. I had to use it because that's all the dealer had when I was coming down from the Alaska Highway. <clears throat> but what I think I'm going to use from now on is the Michelin PR4. I'm going to try it. It's had great reviews. And so back is 100% road, front is 9010. That's going to be for my 
driving around with my wife, driving around alone, uh, going to Atlanta from, from Maryland, but not going on any major expedition. And then, when I know I'm going to go off-road, I'm going to stick to the traditional front, which is a Continental TKC80, and on the back I'm going to put a Carew 3. Um, not I'm going to, because I've already tried the combo and it's fabulous. Uh, the Carew 3 rear holds out better, I find, than any of the Contis and pretty much any other tire I've had. And it, it's great, except the only time I have personally had a problem with the Carew 3 is on a grassy slope, you know, when it's a little slippery. Um, because the lack of, of big, big knobs, uh, eh, I, I've lost a little bit of traction there, but that's it. And on the front, I want full traction, so I'm, I'm sticking to the TKC 80s. So that's it. That's my R1200 GS Adventure 2014. And I hope I'll see you on the road or off.